As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. May 5th, 1981. Three captains in the Bonanno crime family. Philip, Phil Lucky, Giacconi, Alphonse, Sonny Red, and Delicato, and Dominic Big Trin Trinchera were all lured to the 2020 nightclub owned by Sammy the Bull Gravano in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn, by their Bonanno superiors under the pretext of discussing peace to resolve issues within the family were ambushed and executed by four men in ski masks who were hiding in the club's storeroom closet while a fourth man was said to have escaped. The bullet-riddled body of Sonny Red and Delicato would be discovered later that same month in May of 1981, and although it was reported that the body was found by children playing in a vacant lot known as The Hole, a Gambino burial ground located off 78th Street between Blake and Dumont Avenues on the border of Brooklyn and Queens, New York, it would later come out that was just a lie put out by the FBI to protect the identity of their confidential informant, Willie Boy Johnson, codenamed Wahoo, who had given them the location of the body. According to the now deceased Willie Boy Johnson, John Gotti, Willie Boy's childhood friend, as well as friend of Joe Messino, who had ordered the hits of the three Bonanno Capos, which we'll get back to in a minute, had helped Messino dispose of the three men's bodies after the hit as a favor by having his brother Gene, along with Angelo Ruggiero, John Carneglia, and Willie Boy Johnson, bury them at the hole. The other two men who were whacked with Sonny Red that night, Trinchera and Giacconi's bodies, would be found in 2004 after receiving more information from other cooperating witnesses. Philip Rustelli was the boss of the Bonanno family and in prison at the time of the three Capos murders, but Rustelli was still running the family from his jail cell through Joe Messino and Dominic Sonny Black Napolitano. When word got back to the three Bonanno leaders that there was three rebel members of the family, Trinchera, Giacconi, and Adelicato, plotting to kill Messino and Napolitano in an attempt to overthrow Rustelli and take control of the family, Messino immediately wanted revenge. But word of the three rebels' plots had also made its way back to the commission, and Gambino boss Paul Castellano reached out to Messino, telling him they wanted no bloodshed, at least until Rustelli was out of prison. It's also been said that Vincent the Chin Giganti, boss of the Genovese family, had told Sonny Red, quote, You don't understand. If you go to war, we'll kill all of you on the spot. End of story. When discussing the beef between the two factions. Two meetings would take place between the two factions in an attempt to squash the beef and create peace. One meeting held at the Ferncliff Manor on February 4th, 1981, and the second meeting would take place at the Brooklyn Embassy Terrace. But the peace talks would come to a halt when a Colombo soldier by the name of Tutty Franzis, nephew of legendary Colombo gangster Sonny Franzis, had informed Messino that a man named Frank Lino, who's on the side of the rebel faction, was letting Sonny Red stash weapons at his Brooklyn bar, and that Sonny Red was buying an arsenal of automatic weapons, preparing to go to war with the Rustelli faction. When Messino took this information back to Paul Castellano and Colombo boss Carmine the Snake Persico for advice, both men told Messino to do what he had to do to protect himself. Following his talk with the two bosses, Messino would then schedule a fateful meeting, which would be the last for Trinchera, Giacconi, and Indelicato, telling the rebel faction they were there to settle their problems. Frank Lino was the fourth man at the meeting that night and is said to be the lone survivor, later became a federal cooperator and told the FBI on the night the two factions were set to meet, Sonny Red and Delicato had a strong suspicion that the men might be whacked that night, so instead of bringing his son, Anthony Bruno and Delicato, as was planned, he instead took Frank Lino, and then informed his son if the four men never made it out of their meeting that night, his job was to kill Joe Messino, Sonny Black, and all the Zips, who were Sicilian gangsters in the Bananos, brought in by Rustelli after he took out Carmine Galante and became boss. The killing of Galante and recruitment of the Zips is also the reason the rebel faction was said to be planning to overthrow the family. Joe Messino would enlist his brother-in-law, 
and former Banano member Sal Vitale, along with three other men bought in from Montreal, Canada. Vito Rizzuto, referred to as the John Gotti of Canada, Emmanuel Ragusa, and a man only known as the Old Timer to execute the hit. Those four men were hiding in a closet while Messino, Gerlando Schiacia, and Banano Zip Tony Santo Giordano would all greet the four rebel faction Banano members. Plan was when the four men in the closet seen Schiacia run his fingers through his hair, they were to jump out blasting. While the rebel faction and all the other men were greeting each other, Schiacia gave the signal. Vito Rizzuto and the three others rushed out of the closet, Rizzuto yelling, this is a holdup. Trinchera is said to have charged the four gunmen, but took a shotgun blast to the stomach, dropping them to the ground and killing them. Lino is said to have knocked down one of the Canadian shooters and made a run for the door after jumping over Trinchera's body and running past the other men, escaping the gunfire. Sonny Red, who was shot in the side and back, was crawling towards the exit when Skiasia is said to have pulled out his gun and shot Indelicato in the left side of his head, finishing him off. And lastly, Giacconi was trapped in the back of the room and was quickly shot down. There's multiple versions of what took place that night, with slight details varying from person to person, being that all the information came years later from a few different government witnesses. But overall, the men's stories are pretty similar. One version states that Messino punched or hit Indelicato with some sort of object, knocking him to the ground right after Rizzuto came out screaming. And another story says Schiacia punched Trinchera, who was charging the gunman. In Sal Vitale's testimony, he stated that Rizzuto shot Trinchera, but Rizzuto would later say he didn't fire any shots. Vitale claims he was put on guard duty to watch the door by Messino after accidentally letting off five gunshots from a submachine gun hitting the wall before the men arrived. Santo Tony Giordano would catch a bullet in the chaos by one of his own men and was rushed to his uncle's house while the other crew members went to Giordano's doctor's house and rang his doorbell at 11 p.m. The doctor, who was wearing pajamas at the time, was handed $500 and told they had an emergency and was rushed to their car. The doctor looked at Giordano's injuries and determined he would need to go to the hospital, so he ordered a private ambulance to escort Giordano. The doctors were able to stop his bleeding, but Giordano would be paralyzed due to his wounds. When visited by the FBI upon learning about his gunshot, Giordano told them nothing. Not too many years after the shooting, Giordano would actually die in a plane crash. The men who were said to have been the cleanup crew after the hit stated there was blood and guts all over the place. The men were said to have started the ambush using shotguns and then switched to pistols to finish the job. They are then said to have loaded the bodies into a van out the front door and driven to Queens where Gotti had already arranged a crew for the burial. Lionel, who escaped death that night, came back the next day to discuss the event and try to create peace. He was picked up by Skiacia and Giordano, who told Lionel they were definitely planning to kill him if he hadn't escaped. Vito Rizzuto was extradited to the U.S. on May 4, 2007 to face trial for the three murders, but was sentenced to only 10 years on reduced charges. Joe Messino was found guilty of the three capos' murders, along with multiple other murders and various charges, and following the verdict, he would flip and start cooperating with the FBI. He admitted to ordering a hit on Skiacia, who was their connection to the Montreal faction, after Skiacia accused Messino's friend of abusing drugs. Messino would serve ten and a half years for his cooperation and was released in 2013. Sal Vitale, Messino's brother-in-law and underboss of the Bonanno family, also flipped, and when testifying, he stated after dropping the bodies off to Gotti's crew, he was sent back to the 2020 club to clean up, but said there was so much blood that they instead had someone burn the building down the next day. Vitaly pled guilty to 11 murders and other charges, but received time served in 2010 after cooperating and would go on to join the witness protection program. Skiacia would be shot to death by two men while driving to the Bronx, where they would dump his body in the street on orders from Vitali given by Joe Messino. Messino had told Vitali to have the two shooters, Patrick DeFlippo and John Spirito, make the hit look like a drug deal gone bad to avoid problems with the other members of the Montreal faction. Messino is said to have ordered Skiacia's murder for telling him how to run the family, and because the Montreal faction was becoming more powerful and more richer than the New York faction. They started committing murders without permission from Messino 
and had refused to do a hit for him as well. So in a jealous rage, Messino then had Skiasia whacked. Anthony Bruno and Delicato, the son of Sonny Red, was released from prison on May 20th, 2022, after serving time for the murder of Frank Santoro in 2001. The hit on Santoro was ordered by Vincent Basciano, better known as Vinnie Gorgeous, who believed Santoro was plotting to kidnap one of Basciano's kids. In 2008, Indelicano was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Frank Lano would serve eight years but be released at 76 years old on time served for his cooperation. And Dominic Sonny Black Napolitano would go on to be whacked on August 17, 1981, after being summoned to a meeting for allowing Joe Pistone, a.k.a. Donnie Brasco, to infiltrate the Bonanno family under Sonny Black's watch, as famously depicted in the movie Donnie Brasco, which I'll discuss in a future video. And finally, the original Bonanno boss when this all started, Philip Ristelli, would receive a 12-year prison sentence in 1987, making Messino new boss, and Ristelli would be released from prison on July 21st, 1991 for humanitarian reasons, would go on to die in the Queen's Hospital just three days after his release from liver cancer at the age of 73.